Take this. And I'd like you to take your seats, get comfortable.
Lord Jesus, we believe in you, we trust in you, and in you we find hope, hope for our personal situation, and hope for the nations. Lord Jesus, as our young people disperse their groups, we pray blessing on them, we pray blessing on their leaders, that they may know your wisdom, your love, your guidance. That's uh, all our thoughts, whether they're here in the church or in the back rooms or in the hall, we know your love and your presence guidance this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the us our young groups to go. And in just a second we'll say our prayer confession and we'll continue in worship. Um, we're going to look at these words and think now about just a moment of confession before we go. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought, word, deed, the negligence, the weakness of our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry and repent for all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. So, my Almighty God, who forgives all the true and have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the joy of the Gospel is that God freely forgives. He delights to forgive because he wants to be in relationship with us. So let's celebrate God's goodness as we continue to sing. I hand over to the group. Please stand if you're Standing. Uh, feel free to sit if you get fatigued during the song, that's fine. Or keep standing if you can, just give them one hand plate.
also the things we do in the week together. And also, when you say kiss in the week, that would be your lights shining out the glory to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated now as God leads in our prayers to the Savior. Silence, please pray for anyone you know who is in special need of our prayers. As we look forward to Christchurch's Christy Diary, we pray for Alex's <coughs> nation next week, followed by Harvest Thanksgiving and Alex's first communion service. We ask that you will truly bless these occasions. We pray for the article to start soon. Please show us who to invite along to this. And we pray for those that do take the course, that they will be excited by it and will want to pursue the Christian faith further. As we think about today's service theme, please help us all to realise and understand that each and every one of us are called to be your disciples. To play our part in spreading the good news of your infinite love and mercy. Help each of us to hear your personal call and respond to it generously and courageously. Lord, help us all to be true apostles and effective collaborators in your mission. Thank you that you see us individually and call us individually to work alongside you in a way that no one else can. Thank you that you trust us to work for you. So please help us to follow you and copy you, knowing that when you call us to a task, you will always give us the resources and the ability to achieve what you are asking us to do. Thank you, Lord, that we are never alone. You are always with us. 
Please help us to walk by your spirit, to share our faith, and to be your hands and your feet. We ask this in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Now we're going to have our uh, offering. Um, I invite you to stand for that and then we'll go to our plea as well, which you'll uh, say stand down as well. So um, I think the plate will be brought forward and the words will be on the To Alpha. Alpha is for the open-minded, the curious, and those who want to explore a little bit more about what life is all about. And each session involves food, film, and a discussion where it's an opportunity for you to say whatever you like in an informal, relaxed way. You can join in on the discussion or say nothing at all. It's totally up to you. And everyone has a seat at the table, no matter what your background or belief. You're all welcome. Stay curious. Try Alpha. Every week we just want to have a bit of an Easter egg, a little bit of a snippet. Um, Lorna, would you come up? I'm not putting you on the spot because I've warned you. Let's give Lorna a round of applause.
wonderful time. We had food, very nice food. What, Alex? I'm not cooking this time. <laughs> now, apparently, my sister is. I don't know if you all know, my sister should be shown. So, please, if you have not experienced that, but or you want to experience something like that, come, come and enjoy. Come and have a couple of hours with us. Good food, good laughs, and discussions. Thank you. And the final question, what difference has Jesus made in your life since Alpha? That's a hard question to answer because I keep saying to myself, has the Holy Spirit been I don't know. I really do not know. But I do feel a different person, I'll be honest. I don't know the answer to that either at the moment. And you're now part of the house group? I am part of the house group. We go on, on a Monday night to my What's the life? Life after Alpha, or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Life after Alpha. And we go once, twice a month to my sister's on a Monday evening. Again, please come, please come in and do this with us. Again, it's not a preaching, it's nothing like that. It is just people sitting around watching the video, what it's all about. And again, having fun and just trying to learn more about the Christian faith. Well done. Thank you all. Let's give another round of applause. So, pressure free environment, free food. What is there to not like about that? And we do have fun. And this, this term, this alpha, we're actually going to go away to Amsterdam Priory. On the, there's a day where we have a bit more of, of, of experiencing it. Learning about the Holy Spirit. So I've got about about 10, 11 places left. If more than that want to come, we can make it happen. Um, so please do come along. The postcards are at the back this week. Um, I think about 80 of these were taken last week. Um, so the news is out there. It takes at least eight times for someone to actually say yes to coming to Alpha. So you need to ask somebody at least eight times. And as I said last week, 56% of people who know about Alpha have never been invited. So let's bring that statistic down to 0%. So, stay curious, try Alpha. I think, can we get back to that? Food on the table. 
uh, and monetary collection will have our normal gifts, but on top of that, we'll have a specific opportunity to give, and that money will go to the food bank as well, because they have to buy food as well as make some donations. Um, and Alex will be presiding over here, which will be a uh, uh, joyous occasion. Um, tonight, we've got our pleasant service to our Sunday month. Uh, it's going to be a very simple service tonight, which we're going to get a course for to just sing together for a little while to find you the book of scripture. Uh, but please come if you can to that. A little completely aside, really, but um, Paul was talking just before the service about his son Mac doing a Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood Mac tribute called Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Getting my tongues tied. Um, but along with a guy called Jeff Hillier, who's known to be in this church. So please pick up the leaflet if you want to get to that. That's the 6th and 7th of October. So look out for the leaflet at the back for that as well. Um, just check my list. pray for us before we begin. Lord, thank you uh, for your word, thank you that it is um, alive and active, and Lord, I pray that you would speak to us through it this morning, that you'd encourage us and that you'd help us to grow in our faith and um, our relationship with you. Amen. Amen. So, can I have the first slide, please? So, welcome to Disciple School. Um, I spent a lot of time looking for those white backgrounds, so you could just marvel at it. Just, someone else designed it, it wasn't me, but beautiful, are they? So, um, the disciples um, were first called by Jesus. This is when we first meet them in the Bible, and they were called with the words, Come and follow me. And this call 
wasn't a call to follow Jesus round like his entourage and to like make him a celebrity or to carry his clothes or get his coffee, but the call was to follow him in order that they could learn. The call was to get so close to him that they would get the dust of his sandals onto their clothes. Jesus invited them to follow him, to learn from him, and to watch what he did. And today's passage is the day when he gathers them together and he says, off you go, now it's your turn. And there were lots of theories and lots of research that has been done to how actually we learn. Some people, and you might already know which, if you have a preference, um, for a style of learning, like which preference you have. But some people have a preference for learning by reading something. Some it might be listening to instructions, some it might be just giving it a go and like making it up as you go along and see what happens and hoping for the best. Um, some of you, it might be someone showing you first and then you having a go. But actually for lots of us, how we learn will differ depending on what it is we're learning. So if we're learning a new language, there's a lot of repeating after the teacher isn't there. Um, I studied French um, and so a lot of my kind of early secondary school was a echo a repeater, there you go, it's got in. Um, and if you're learning to cook or you're trying a new recipe, you probably would prefer written instructions as you follow that recipe. And if we're learning DIY or a musical instrument or learning to drive, then that generally needs to be much more practical. Can you imagine trying to learn how to drive just from a written list of instructions? It would be chaotic, wouldn't it? But in all of these things, we don't, we don't learn alone. We have a tutor. Even if that tutor is a book or is a video online, someone is still teaching us. We follow along and we copy what they do. So for the disciples, this was just the same. Um, so they had both experience and authority. Because where we meet them in chapter 10, this isn't day one at disciple school. They've already seen Jesus do loads and loads of stuff. Please, can you just hold the next slide? Because that is what that answers. Um, so what have they already seen Jesus do? Shout at me. Heal, miracles. Pray. Turn it into wine. Very important. Yeah, other ones, some on the back chapters. Teach, yeah. Calm a big storm. Cast out demons. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. Yeah. So quite a lot. Yeah. And can I have the next slide, please? So in just Matthew um, chapter 8 and chapter 9. The disciples have seen him do all of these things. They've seen him heal the skin disease leprosy. They've heal, uh, seen him heal people that are paralysed. They've also, prior to this, they've seen him feed thousands of people miraculously. He's healed blind people, he's cast out demons, and he's raised a little girl back to life again. They have been learning from him how to pray for others and how to ask God for the miraculous. And um, verse 1 of chapter 10 says this, it's a little reminder for us. Jesus calls his 12 disciples, his students or his followers, and he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. And it is so easy to read this just casually and gloss over it. Like I'm sure it's not just me that does this. But if it is, someone just graciously point that out to me and I'll work a bit harder on it. But we just read it and go, oh yeah, no, that's, that's, what, that's what they did. Great, next bit, and we move on. And don't always let the impact of that hit us. Jesus gave them permission. He delegated his status and he put his confidence in them and their ability to do it. What were they sent out to do? Well, they were sent out to just go and do what he had been doing. And so much so that in verse 2, I wonder if you can remember or if you've got your Bible open, what are the, what are the disciples now called? Not the list of names, that's a lot. 
apostles. They're now called the apostles, which means the saint. They are no longer followers. They are now the people that are sent. So it isn't like graduation and you've done your GCSEs and you've ticked, the, ticked this box. They were on an apprenticeship. But like, they're no longer followers. They are now the people that are sent. So the mission. Thank you. Um, Jesus gathered the 12 apostles, the sent, together. And he gave them their instructions. And also, if we were going to carry on reading uh, <laughs> the passage, there is, frankly, the most epic health and safety briefing I've ever seen. Um, he talks to them about what to take with them and what not to take with them. He talks to them about how to deal with conflict if people don't welcome them. How do you deal with that safely? Um, his safeguarding is on It's very good. His safeguarding is on point. And he tells them really curiously not to go to the Gentiles, so not to go to the people who are um, Jews. And he says, go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And I read this and I was really confused because I was like, hmm, hang on, Gentiles, like Jesus, Jesus was there for the whole world, not just the people of Israel. Um, and so I did a little bit of reading to try and find out what that was about. And, and how it was explained was that it was like being sent to the first part of the family to give them a, a chance to respond to the authority of Jesus before Jesus is made known to everyone. So the invite to be part of Jesus' family and to know him still applies to people that aren't Jews. However, it was kind of like a phased approach. Or, I was thinking of it like if a company is going to kind of release a, a press release or um, a statement, like they make sure everybody already in the company knows first before it goes out to the wide world, if that helps. Um, and so, as we continue to read, Jesus in his instructions, in his health and safety briefing, he tells them the task that he has for them. He says, tell the people that Jesus is here among them. The promised saviour is doing his thing. That's a bit of a paraphrase. Um, and then he says, as a demonstration of that, or as an outworking of the kingdom, whilst you're doing that, if you come across people who are sick, heal them. Cleanse people who have leprosy or skin diseases. Drive out demons. Because you have freely experienced this for yourselves. You have seen it and you have witnessed it. So go and give it to others. Give it away. Off you go. It's now your turn. And I imagine that some of them would have been really excited. And in my head, when I read like the commissioning and the sending them out, there's, if it was Hollywood, it'd be like the most amazing soundtrack of life. But it would be just be incredible, wouldn't it? And, and some of them would have been so excited. They're like, yes, finally! We've followed it around for ages and now we get to have a go. And some of them would have been like, oh, my actual days. I did not think this was how this was going to go. Um, this is not what I had for my plan for today. And some of them might not fully have been listening. I would have been like, what was it? He's talking about the shoes. He's like, oh, to take more than one pair of shoes. I've got a bag. He said not to take a bag, but it's not big. It's kind of just a big pocket. Is that okay? I'm one of them. I'm like, can we? I don't know. It's true. Um, as an aside, in the commentaries, there is so much space given to whether they can take shoes or not. Apparently, we all care about footwear. Um, and in case anyone else is now distracted for the rest of this, going, can they take shoes? Um, so what, what it says is, you can't take a spare pair. So you can take the shoes you're wearing, but just don't take spares, okay? You will not get busted, it'll be fine. Um, and I'm sure many of us will have had moments like this, where we've been asked to do something and just feel so unbelievably unprepared for the task ahead of us. So one instance in my life was the, was the day I passed on driving to Belfast. I was so excited to learn how to drive. Um, I had a lesson on my 17th birthday, that is how excited I was. And um, I could not wait to learn. And I passed my test. I 
So get this is recorded in this service. I passed my test, however there are a couple of instances which would suggest I probably shouldn't have, but God was really kind. I'm not going to say what happened, but I'll talk to me after. Um, but I passed. And, and my mum had said to me, like she had a lot of faith in me, and she was like, when you pass in, what do, where do you want to go? And I was like, Mom, I want to drive to the traffic centre on the motorway. So the traffic centre is like Blue Water, but a little bit further away than Blue Water is from here. And I'd been driving there for a while, but you just couldn't go on the motorway because obviously I wasn't allowed to. But it took forever to go the whole way around. You had to go up this a bit of a drama. So I was like, that is what I want to do. So I got home and I passed my test. And I was like, Mom, it's a miracle. And um, she was like, right, well, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, I said to my mom, I said, do you know, I've never driven in the car on my own without anyone else there, because you're not allowed to before you pass your test. So can I just go around the block and then I'll pick you up at the end of the road? And she was like, yeah. I was like, great. And I got in and I sat down and I was like, I don't know what any of this does anymore. It's like I've literally forgotten how to do all of it. Like, it's like, it's like I've not had nine months of lessons. And I just completely panicked. I took a breath and I sorted it out. I didn't crash the car going around the corner and it was all fine. Um, in that moment, it was in me, but I just lost my confidence. The, the other time I felt woefully underprepared, um, I still maintain this story is on someone else's mind. So I went on an overseas trip to Russia for three weeks to work with a charity um, who talked to students about Jesus. And firstly, I did not want to go on this trip. You know when God is calling you to do something, and you're like, I really don't want to do that, thank you, thank you very much. But I was being obedient because I lived in Liverpool and I knew the story of Jonah and I didn't want to get eaten by a big fish coming down the river. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going. So I went. I mean, it's unlikely, but you know, God is God. I was obedient, I knew God was telling me to go, but I didn't want to go. And we gathered for team training, everybody together. Um, to learn um, about how to do mission and to learn a little bit about the culture of where we were going. I knew nothing about Russia. I knew it was big, I knew it snowed, not in July, as it turns out. And, um, and so we were going to get there, and I was so excited because I was like, this is where I find out how to do this. This is, this is where I find out how not to offend people in that context. How, like, how to find out a little bit of language so that I can say hi to people and just be polite and ask where the station is because everyone learns that. And so I will share with you what they told me. So imagine I have my book out because I'm a pen and paper woman. And uh, the guy got up and he said, right, okay, cross-cultural mission, the thing, the most important thing that you need to remember is it's not wrong, it's just different. And I was like, great. Write that down, underline, underline it, write a little cloud around it, this is a very important point. And that, that was the sum total of the cross cultural training. So I was going to Russia for three weeks with absolutely no knowledge of the culture or the language, going with, well, it's not wrong, it's just different. And they, and they were like, right, off you go, it's now your turn to go and work with Russian students. I'm going to need a tiny bit more. Um, amazingly though, we had someone on our team who had grown up in Ukraine, so I understood the language and was able to communicate for all of us. Um, and thankfully, Jesus' cultural training was a little bit more comprehensive. They'd followed him around, they'd seen him do the stuff. Can I have the next slide? So, for the disciples, it was about obedience as they went off to put into practice all that they had learned. And I wonder what stories they came back with and the stories that they would tell for years and years to come. Like, I remember Peter when we went off to that town and, like, we healed that person. Wasn't it as amazing when, when you prayed and we're like, God healed them? It was incredible. Or for John when we went to that town and we prayed and that person had walked again. And I really hope that Thaddeus, who no one knows anything about, like he got the most stories, that's my hope for him, but we'll 
we'll never know this side of eternity. And so was it that there was anything really special about the disciples? Not really. Like, I, they had studied right next to Jesus. They'd been up close and had seen him do all of this stuff firsthand. But the apostles were not magic. They weren't magicians. They were obedient. And I think, I think that we have an advantage over them in some ways. Because when we look at the whole timeline of God's story in the Bible, they were sent out to do this before Pentecost, before the Holy Spirit was poured out for all people. So when Jesus says, off you go, it's your turn to us, yes, we haven't followed Jesus from town to town, we haven't lived Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 9 personally, but we have the Spirit of God in us. As we, as we, as we, as we sang earlier, the same spirit that raised um, Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us. So when he says, off you go, it's your turn, we have his authority, we have his permission, we have his confidence in us, and we have his spirit. And we aren't magic, we're not magicians when we pray for people. When we place a hand on their shoulder and ask God to heal them, it isn't based on us, it isn't based on whether we've used our left hand or our right hand, it isn't based on whether we've read our Bible that morning or not, because it is God who does the healing, not us. It is Him who envelops people in His love and reassures them and gently whispers, to their souls, it is him who opens their eyes to see him as he is. It is him who heals impure spirits and habits, not us. We are obedient, we are not magic. So this must take the pressure off us, surely, because it isn't on us to manufacture or produce results. It's on us to be available and to be obedient to that nudge when the Spirit nudges us to speak to someone, to pray for someone. It is on us to be obedient and share who Jesus is with those people that we know and to ask them to heal and act in the difficult situations. And there are some kind of guidelines to this, but once again, it's not like a formula or like a magic way of doing it because it's God who heals, not us. And there are some words of caution that I would give, like if ever you were praying for someone um, who, and you felt that there was like a really crazy spirit going on, like that's the kind of thing where you go, Richard, could you just come on and deal with this? If you think for any moment there is some really dark thing happening within a person, that's when you get more help. I've not been trained in that. Richard's done some modules, but he also knows people. Um, there you go. Um, that's what that's what theological training is for. Get rid of um, But there's but other than that, there's no reason why, other than our own fear or our own lack of confidence or our own like, oh my goodness, what if God doesn't heal and I'm like an idiot? Or oh my goodness, what if God does heal them and I literally don't know what to do with that? But that's us. That's our thing that we need to work through and be more confident in. So. Jesus says to the disciples, off you go, it's your turn. So, off you go, it's our turn. And we, we have prayed for people in church before. We're gonna, we're gonna offer the opportunity to pray in church again. And we're, um, the way that we're gonna do it, sometimes we've asked people to come out to the front. We're not gonna do that. I think um, what I was praying about this and thinking this through and I felt that if there were people that felt they needed healing this morning, and that actually we would encourage people to stand where they are, and then because we are the church family, that actually we would gather around those people and we, we would pray for them. Um, so there's, there's some kind of, just as a reminder, that's a really good practice guidelines on how we do that. So we would ask that you only pray with someone who's the same gender as you, unless you're like married to them or they're your parents or your children. Um, young people, so we're all young, but we're, we're putting a benchmark of under 18. 
Um, so if you're under 18, I think her is someone who's a parent or who is also under 18 and of the same gender as you. And, and the way that we approach someone to pray for them, we just really lovingly say, is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? And you might be having a day where you're like, yes, that is fine. But you might be having a day where you're like, I just personal space like a meter around me, please. That's okay. So if you don't want someone to put their hand on their shoulder, say no thank you. Um, that's okay. And and then if you're the person being prayed for, you might want to put your hands out as if you're receiving a present, like a gift of healing from God. Once again, this isn't a magic formula. It's not like God will only work with your hands are here at about 90 degrees, but it depends on your shoulders. Um, that's not like the spirit isn't limited by whether our hands are out or not. It's about us making ourselves open and vulnerable um, and open to God and what he might do. And also, you might want to tell the person what's going on for you, like what needs healing. Um, you also might not, that's okay. Um, and also, you don't need to give like a full rundown of your medical history of like, well, when I was seven. Um, yeah, we're not at the gym um, And also, um, there's a story in Luke chapter 18 where, um, Jesus, I should have checked the between services because I've not remembered what it was Jesus was healing at 8 o'clock and I didn't look, being very honest. Um, I think that Jesus is healing a blind man um, and he said, what is it you want me to do for you? I really believe that when we come to Jesus and ask for healing, he says that to us, like, what is it you want me to do for you? So as you're being prayed for, you might not think to be telling Jesus what it is that you like to be prayed for. So, um, if you are someone who is here this morning, who would like to be prayed for, for healing or for something else, please would you be courageous and stand. And our worship, Team are really uh, kindly going to play some music and sing over us whilst we do that. Um, and Lord, I pray that you would come by your spirit. Lord, I pray that you would be healing us today. Lord, we invite your spirit into this place. So, Holy Spirit.
but as we um, kind of move on in our service, um, if during the week you feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit to pray with someone, I just want to encourage you to step over that like, oh my goodness, I can't do it, and just give it a go and see what happens. And um, if you, you're prayerful for healing and you feel that, that God has healed you, like, come and tell us, not so that we feel great or we can be like, oh, church is amazing, but because it raises faith and it raises confidence amongst us of what God is doing in our lives. And if you, if you wanted to be prayed for, but were like, I cannot stand up, that is too public, um, please come and speak to me or speak to Richard or our names afterwards. We would love to pray with you. So Father, I thank you for all that you are doing in our world. I thank you for all you are doing in us. And I thank you that you are the God who heals. So Lord, we, we, we commit those things that we need to hear from to you. And Lord, we pray and we ask you to continue to heal. And Lord, that you would bring peace to us and to your world. In Jesus' name.
Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. And uh, all of the name of that is coming forward to help me. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let's say this prayer together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our body, what is made and made clean by his body, and our souls washed in his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
stand and say our final song, Lord, the light of your love.
May the peace of God that passes all our understanding guard our hearts and minds and bless us with the knowledge and love of Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.